Hi. Good afternoon. Hi, it's Karen Grunberg, and I'm excited to have you all on the line with us along with our marketing team here. We have a great new website to share with you which many of you have seen, and it's all driven by, with our new updated consumer strategy, and it's really focused on the customer journey. It was created in, with the help and support of Code and Theory. I'm going to turn this over to Tracy Lanza to lead off the conversation for the webinar, but I just want you to make note, we're going to have some time for questions at the end, and you'll be able to uh, send us those questions through our online chat feature. So Tracy, I'm excited for you to take it on. Thanks Karen, and welcome to everybody, and thanks for making time in your schedule to join us this afternoon. Um, today's agenda is going to focus on a few things. First, before we take you through the new websites and our content strategy, we are going to walk you through the 2017 campaign strategy um, which pertains to both our new campaign which we'll be sharing at a later date and the new websites and content. We'll take you through our new visual approach and then we'll turn it back over to Karen and her team for partner marketing updates. Okay. So here we go, the new consumer strategy. Um, if you guys have been with us before, you may be familiar with some of these elements of our uh, strategic framework. Possibility is the foundation with which we launched in 2012 and is very ownable by the United States. We will be building on this foundation and bringing two more pieces into it. The first is persona, which is the opportunity to create the right message for the right people at the right time by really targeting mindsets and motivations for travel. We will be focusing this year on three. The first is excitement, which is just what it sounds like. It's a very high adrenaline, bucket list, experiential type of trip that people are interested in taking. Um, we have a second one called escape, which is uh, the desire to relax and recharge to get away from the workaday world. And the third uh, persona that we're targeting is focused on the idea of local experience and the desire to experience a different culture than one's own. So the, those are the three personas that we will be focusing on for our campaign assets. And then finally, the third leg of our, um, of our triangle is the idea of proximity. And again, many of you may be familiar with this from last year's work. And the idea behind uh, proximity is to make this idea and the possibility of a trip real with travel itineraries and trip suggestions. We focus on hub and gateway destinations and all the different types of trips that a person can do within five hours of a gateway. So for instance, in New York City, you can certainly fly there and there's a wealth of things to do in New York City, but while you're there, you can travel up the Hudson River, you might go to the Hamptons, you can go to Philadelphia, you can go to Boston, and this is a value proposition so that people understand how they can get the biggest bang for their buck in a trip to the United States. So the new campaign statement really delivers on those three P's, and I'll read it to you. The diversity of the USA is exciting and uniquely ours to own in a way that is magnetic and inviting. That's the possibility point up part of the campaign statement. And uniquely yours to discover genuine and authentic opportunities that truly speak to who you are. That's the persona piece of this statement. And the collection of these experiences become our own unique story that we in turn share with friends and family. The making it real part is the proximity part. So there's an American story for everyone just waiting to be created. The name of the new campaign, the, the, the headline statement is see how far you can go and the call to action is plan your USA trip now. You will see elements of this in everything that we show you um, when I turn this over to Mark and Talia. Okay, so with that, I will turn it over to Mark <laughs> and Talia. Uh, Mark Lapidus, our Director of Digital, um, will be taking you through the new website. Thank you, Tracy. This is a very, very exciting day for us at Brand USA. It's the first time we're introducing our new consumer websites to an international forum. Over 40 people spent a year collaborating to create these 15 new websites. We're going to start off with a two-minute video that will take you on a deep dive inside the pages of visittheusa.com, and dancing in your chair is definitely encouraged. <laughs>
I don't know if I should apologize for that earworm or not, but that music definitely gets in your ear. I'll probably have trouble sleeping tonight. So we're going to give you a very quick overview of VisitTheUSA.com, but we truly encourage you to uh, take the time to go through the websites in a language of your preference after the webinar is over. Talia is going to join me in this exercise. So as we just mentioned, there are 15 websites. There's one that's actually brand new. We created one specifically for the United Kingdom. Uh, previously, we actually had a global site that served the UK, and we decided to actually cut that out as a uh, market standalone by itself so we can do things uniquely for the United Kingdom. We're in eight languages. The website is geo-targeted around the globe. And what that means is that if you type visitthusa.com into your browser, anywhere in the world, it will give you the language that's appropriate for your market. It's accelerated, which means that it's not relying on a hosting server to actually send it to you in the U.S. Um, it means that there are points of access all throughout the globe, and so therefore it will actually tap the closest point of access and speed the website to your browser. We decided to build this one in Drupal 8. Drupal 8 has been around for a little less than two years now, um, but it is certainly cutting edge technology which enables us to do something really cool with personalization. Lyft is the new tool that's offered with Drupal 8 through Acquia and it uh, has a memory. So it actually remembers what it is that you're doing when you come to our websites. And what we have done is personalize certain sections. So for example, if you're clicking on outdoors content and it begins to learn that you love the outdoors, it will begin to personalize the pages as you go through the website with more outdoors content, but not to the exclusion of other content. Uh, because obviously, uh, you can take in the other direction with personalization where you've got too much of a good thing for one thing and you're not showing enough of others. There is a Google interactive map that is present throughout the website. And one of the coolest parts of this that I hope you'll play with after we get off is a choose your adventure game. You can see a screenshot of it to your right there where you actually choose between two items, and then the little dots below will change according to your selections, and the experiences below that will then give you the end result. So, and you can play as many times as you want. You just hit shuffle the results again. We've integrated the content this time around for a much better flow so that you're getting a variety of choices every time you look at every page. The construction itself is modular in nature, and what that means is that you can actually take the different sections, like Choose Your Adventure is a good example, and we can either move it up or down the page or turn it off if it's not working in a certain language as we begin to test the website. Um, and we've built a bunch of flexible templates. So we have uh, right now 10 different templates for the website so that when we want to create new things, we have new looks. Talia is now going to take you through the state pages. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Just wanted to remind you all that if you have questions, there's a chat box um, on the webinar itself. And we will be providing these slides at the end of the webinar, so don't worry about taking notes. We'll follow up with a lot more information. So just sit back, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy as we go through the website. So one of the things that we're really excited about is the new state pages. We think that it provides a lot of information at your fingertips for international travelers, like what airports fly there, as you'll see. Um, on this sample Texas page, the state nickname, um, a hero image gallery up top, a lot of different options for featuring video, and different things like that. As well, this is just a snapshot of the page. There are a lot of other different features that you won't see here, like fun facts, your official partner links, um, featured content by location, and then interactive city city map where you actually see dots of different cities and parks in your state. And as I mentioned before, these things can be turned on and off. So for example, if you're not particularly fond of whatever it is your state is known as, and we've heard that from different states, we don't necessarily have to use it. And Mark will talk about the city pages. So with our partners from uh, TripAdvisor, we have integrated them into the city pages. And what you'll see surface there are the top 10 things to do from TripAdvisor. We have official links that are linking back to the DMOs and to other things that make sense to take the consumer to. Uh, there's a, a full hero image gallery with uh, videos that we can feature right in that gallery. Like if you look up the top there, you'll, you'll see that that's actually not just an image. You see the little icon there. It allows you to click it, and the video will come out and play in a very, very cool player. Uh, there are interactive maps. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, we are gradually going to be getting events onto this calendar. 
Uh, one of the things that we've never had before that we are now running through weather underground is seasonal weather so that people can actually take a look at what the weather conditions are going to be like three, three months from now, six months from now, whenever they plan to travel. We find that people are very interested in that through our research. Um, the content is obviously featured by location and we have a fun facts area. So next we'll be taking you through the experience page template. This is also very updated from the previous site. doesn't really do it justice here, but as you can tell, there's still the persistent map. So if you are a state, for example, and you're including a bunch of different cities in that state, it will show you pinpoints for each place uh, mentioned in the story up on the top. This happens to be a story about Denver, so it shows you where in the U.S. Denver is. It also gives you the ability on the right-hand side to nest in different pieces of content that relate to that story. So maybe you talk about other entertainment venues in Denver or other things that you could relate to that. And as well, you have the ability to favorite that page and share it out. So it's pretty awesome. It's really flexible. And of course, we touched on this earlier, but all of these pages are responsive. And if you would like to refresh your experience page, you can contact your brand USA Miles representative. So we also have refreshed all of our trips. As you guys know, we've been doing road trips now. Let's see, we've done three years of them. Actually, we're in our fourth year of doing them. We just completed um, a, uh, a complete um, cycle of them, meaning that we've kind of, we've kind of uh, now closed the loop in terms of getting everybody on board, all states, all territories, um, and we'll be pushing that content out uh, during this year. One of the things we actually learned is initially we did those things as they happened and we rushed through them um, unnecessarily. It's, 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 uh, it's definitely one of the things that we learned from doing them is it's worth taking the time in the production side to actually spend time in production and then push them out a little bit at a time so people kind of uh, get more excited about viewing that content. Um, there are featured videos of every stop. We have the travel times now between the stops. Uh, that we didn't have before. They're geolocated on the map, and um, we have related stories and partner links. So lastly, we'll be showing you the bookmark page feature. Um, we have a lot of heart for this feature internally, but the cool thing about it nice is that pun. you can actually save um, your stories throughout your user trip on our website with the heart feature, just kind of like Instagram, you tap on the heart to save. You can see some of the stories that we showed you here are actually saved in the screenshot. And you'll see the little orange X will allow you to customize and take those things off. If I wanted to share my trip ideas or my stories on social, it generates a unique link. This is also something that you as a partner can leverage. If you want to use something for a campaign, you can actually make your own bookmark page, have a unique link, and that will follow through no matter where you use that link. And the other thing is the next time you come to the site, those things will be saved there. So it's just a light cookie tool for those of you who know what cookies are other than a snack in the afternoon. But this is something that we plan to use a lot coming up, and we hope that you guys will find value in this as well. One of the things that's kept us busy this year is the migration, which is enormous. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of pages per site. So you do the math over 15 sites when you're talking about five to 7,000 pages of content per site. It's a lot of movement, it's a lot of work, and it's also not a one-to-one -one match. Sometimes when you do content migration, it's easy because you're doing it from one website to another that looks exactly the same or similar. In this case, what we did is we totally blew up our website, so that meant there was no one-to-one -one match in the content migration, which further complicates things because obviously you can do some of it through automation, but the vast majority of it has to happen manually, and that's why it has taken us so long to complete this project. The content is being um, updated every single day. The vast majority of it is actually in, but it will continue and will be completed in April. If you have questions about that, there's an email address that you can contact us at. And another thing that's important to note, I know a lot of um, the partners on the phone have participated in our Outdoors and Flavors websites. Those websites are now gone, but the content from those websites will al are also folded into this new site for better navigation, which we mentioned. But all of the content that, that you all have participated in will be on the site. So let's talk a little bit about uh, technology. I'm not going to go too deep here because I know it is the lunch hour and I want people falling asleep on me. We do have a lot of UGC content that is now uh, coming to us through a tool uh, provided by a company called Tint, 
that enables us to, uh, to bring in lots of great stuff through Instagram and, and other social media. We have integrated the language connector, meaning that we can enter copy now in English, send it through, it comes back in other languages directly into our content management system, which makes it much easier to surface. And we have integrated the DAM, uh, our digital asset management system, which is from a company called Media Valet. We're coming into our third year with this. Uh, the DAM has tens of thousands of assets in it now. It's organized by folders. It has a tagging system that is much more consistent than anything we've ever worked with. Uh, the speed is pretty cool. They've been working on that for a long time with us, and, and we've been very pleased with the results. So right now it's much easier to organize, store, catalog things than ever before. And of course, one of the most important things that a DAM enables one to do is to track rights which is very, very important for all of us because it provides the protection that we need. And Karen will be talking about this in her section at the end. This is also how we will eventually ingest all of your images and videos for us to deploy across all of our marketing channels and work with you on marketing. For those of you that actually work on websites, one of the neat things about this is that you actually click a button in the CMS and it brings it damn right into the content management system. So now we're going to cross over to our new content strategy. So we'll be talking about the content strategy today, and one of the things that I would like to bring up before I dive into this is we're not just looking at the content, but we're looking at the context in which a consumer is actually consuming that content. Something that's really important if you're across various channels, is someone looking on their phone, are they looking on their website, um, and how, you know, how much time do they actually have to consume that content. So we're looking at the next development of content. This really ties into what Tracy mentioned earlier of our new consumer strategy and kind of that personal storytelling. So we're really reimagining our content in the eyes of consumer. We're really looking at compelling articles that, that sell that experience of the place, like what, why would you get, across a get on a plane and grow across the U.S.? We're also looking at providing key information at your fingertips, articles that tap into passion points. So if you do actually look at the new site on the experiences section, you'll see the different passion points and topics there that are much more easy to navigate on this new site. We'll have storytelling across media formats and how that might look like. This is just a quick snapshot of this. This is a, the Hawaii State page, and you'll see this is what it looks like on the website. But next to that, this is what Hawaii might look like in a social post. So it's still kind of telling the same story of the islands of Aloha, but it might be telling it in a way that's optimized for Facebook or Instagram or WeChat or whatever platform we're talking about. Talking about. And we're also looking at updating the video styles to suit that platform. So all, as the, well. all the content, uh, I don't think we mentioned this before, is responsive. So you'll see it play just as well on mobile and tablet as on desktop. So the one thing that we're debuting this year is a calendar approach. I think this will be a lot easier for you all to understand kind of what we're talking about when. We're doing integrated content across platforms. So essentially it's a channel agnostic approach. So whether you look at our Facebook page or you look at our website, or at our multi-channels, they'll still be talking about the same topic. How that topic or that story is told depends largely on the personas, which Tracy mentioned earlier, and what that market interest is. So entertainment to China can mean different things than entertainment to India. We're also looking at, of course, supporting and amplifying partner programs through this calendar approach so we're all talking about the same thing at the same time. And uh, just to reiterate, because we can't say this enough, but each content piece is native to that platform. So it's content and context simultaneously. So what that means practically really is versioning of assets, meaning you create one asset and then you take a look at how it might play on these other platforms. And you may have to slightly alter that asset in terms of the way it's delivered so that it looks right in whatever it's being served in. So just a snapshot of the FY17 calendar. I bet you guys can all read this in one minute. We will be providing you with the partner version of this calendar which will break this down a lot further. But as you can see here, we have quarterly themes with different tones and different topics. Every partner will be able to tap into these kind of passion points depending on the destination. You'll see here what value that provides to the partner and how it relates to the campaign. And this will all be made publicly available to you guys as a follow-up. So I won't go through the entire calendar right now, but I will just take a sample of um, the quarter that we're in at the moment. So looking at um, this quarter, we're right now January is the Ignite month since we're going to be launching our consumer campaign which you'll hear more about later. Then February we'll be talking about entertainment and March will be about guiding the traveler once they have had that top line inspiration. So looking at what this could look like for February 
and the different personas, you can understand kind of how we are approaching the different content types. We're talking about excitement in the way of a roller coaster in Texas, for example. And for the escape persona, we're talking about the outdoors, where you can be under the stars that will tap into the personas of markets like Germany and Korea. And the local persona might be stepping into a larger than life globe, as you'll see here. And again, this is a very high level overview, which you guys will get more detail about. One of the things later. that I'm really excited about personally is our development of neighborhoods, because it's something we have not done before to any great extent. So one of the things we're going to be doing this year is diving deep into those cool neighborhoods across the United States. And we will really rely on you all for that information since you're in the destination, and we'll talk about that more in the end about how you can get involved. But it helps us tell the larger USA story if you help provide us with those tidbits and juicy details about all the different neighborhoods. So next we'll be talking about our new visual approach because we've been largely talking about storytelling, but the way that we present the USA has also pivoted in reflection of the new campaign to really have an inspirational visual that move you approach, so it's more a, a personal point of view. So I think this picture, tell you by the way, is a tremendous example. It, it enables us to kind of point out what we're trying to do, and that is putting people in pictures in such a way that it pulls you into the photograph and lets you see the imagery in front of them through their eyes. Mm -hmm. So as Tracy always says, it's pictures of you or that you took. So it's really that first person approach and makes people have an emotional connection to to the destination, which is what ultimately our main goal is. I mean, I want to be that guy. I look good in that hat, too. That's true. She has really <laughs> shiny hair, so of course. So one of the things that we're, um, we're doing is really emphasizing the imagery. I can't um, emphasize this enough. We literally chose every single image on our site. Um, we redid everything from one site to the other. So that's the one thing that didn't actually migrate from the old site. So we really wanted to reinvent our visual language essentially through immersive content. And that's the one thing that really translates across languages because so much of what we do is written, but a lot of that is visual. So every image needs to have a sense of place, offer a traveler's perspective, most importantly evoke an emotion and showcase the breadth and diversity of the USA. So it might sound like kind of an easy task, but it actually was pretty hard to find these kinds of visuals. And of course, we want to make sure that we work closely with you all on getting the best up-to-date visuals from your destination. So like I said, we curated every image on the website. We worked with different content creators. We worked with Tint to pull in UGC images on the website, which you'll see areas that those are located, and we're working on um, new technologies. We even went as far as to uh, work with some, um, some image editors that have uh, global experience in terms of what plays across the planet. And when you look at it through their eyes, you begin to, uh, I think, get a much better view of what it is that people are interested in seeing. So one of the ways that we selected new images is using this creative screen. This, again, might be a little hard for you to read on the screen, but we'll, we will be providing you with this in, um, as a follow-up. But essentially, this is kind of the checklist that we do. Um, is, the place, is the piece of content uniquely USA? Does it drive positive affection to visit the USA? Because, again, that is our goal. Does it demonstrate diversity? Does it feel like it was captured in the moment? One of the things that we really try to stay away from is staged stock photos. It's like, the, it's like the enemy of having an emotional reaction because you know it's staged. So this is how we kind of rep represent that authenticity. Is it in the traveler's focal point? And does it motivate action? Again, will you get on a plane and come here? Because that's what we're trying to get people to do. So now that we've gone through the, um, the content strategy and the new visual storytelling, I'm going to pass it over to Karen, who's going to talk about our partner programs and opportunities. Thank you. you this team has done a tremendous job bringing this to life. Bringing this. Uh, thank you. The team has done a tremendous job in bringing this to life. And I know our partners are participating in providing content through the dam and et cetera, but we want to talk about how we can update some of the pages that you have been intricately involved in creating. So if we can go to the next slide. Our state and city program update. So as uh, Talia shared with us about the state and city pages, we know that they are more exciting with more features. 
So we can update your pages. You can work with us through either your Brand USA team member and, and or the Miles team member who works with you to create updated uh, city and state pages where you can only shape your own content and messaging. We will connect consumers to relevant travel partners. But what's exciting is we are also marketing that information both through our home page and creating dedicated audience development campaigns to target markets. The experience pages, again, now our partners can uh, participate individually with these experience pages and they allow us to really create rich and visual storytelling features and they have actual call to, item, uh, call to actions that we can link to some of our partners to activate the product. There's a lot of cross-linking to destinations and related experiences and trips. So it takes the consumer deeper into the journey and really into their interests. We, again, with this program, we also have dedicated audience development campaigns to focus on the target markets for each of our partners. The, what's new is within our trip pages is our very successful road trip program. Many of you have participated with us on road trip, and now we have laid out a strategy for you to create your own road trip across cities, states, regions, neighborhoods, to make because when a traveler travels. They need to know how to get from one place to another and beyond those gateways. And it has a, it's created with four to seven day itineraries. There are great mapping features and trip distances. And there's dedicated, again, on-site marketing development. Over the last six months, we've introduced several different video opportunities because we know that video is one of the key items for telling stories. 80% of all international web users watch videos, and 71% of travelers, travelers use these videos to explore their trip ideas. So this year we introduced a number of new opportunities including uh, videos for road trips. And each of the video programs that we have out there include a dedicated media campaign. So that wraps us up. Um, I want to say thank you and open this for questions. We will share with you how to get involved with us. So let's go to questions. Do we have any questions yet? Uh, so there's a, a reminder that there's actually a chat box on uh, the tool that you're using. So if you have a question, you can enter it there on the chat box. I guess we'll wait for 20, 30 seconds to see whether or not anything comes up. So far, I don't believe we're seeing anything, right? That's great. But of course, you can also talk with your, your Brand USA representative for your questions. I just want to also talk about a great job this team did. They had over 7,000 pages of content, and they pulled it off of 44 individual sites we were managing. It's pretty amazing. Thank you, Sarah. We, we survived. <laughs> it's a lot of coffee. Okay. First question? I think there are. You want to hand me the computer? I can't. Mark, why don't you just read it? Um, where do we start here? This is from uh, Janine Breshars. How do we submit a new 360 video to Brand USA for adding to our experience pages? So all content. This is Polly. Yeah, thanks for your question. All content for Brand USA should be submitted through the DAM, um, and that way we can use it in other marketing campaigns. If it if it's content that you don't have the rights to transfer, we can embed content. For, through YouTube, but again, you should speak to your Miles representative or Brand USA representative about which experience pages or city or state pages that you've participated in and what options are available to you. Ariane Hildebrand asks, is it free for all destinations such as counties to submit content to your website? This is Talia again. Thanks, Ariane. Thanks for joining. Um, we, we will accept content for all um, into our dam that can be deployed across many marketing channels, including the website. However, if you, if you want to control that call to action and work with us on messaging, you will need to participate in one of our partner programs. And we can choose to put that content on our, on our brand pages on the website, but if, you're, if you want guaranteed exposure, you do need to talk to your Brand USA or Miles representative. Brent Berlusconi says, for the UGC, are you working with local DMOs or just searching on your own? So go ahead. So for UGC, we're using the tint board, and so it's actually done by destination. So we'll look for any destination tag that is talking about that topic. So for example, in the must-see places module on the states page, you'll see that there's actually 
a place where UGC content can be filled in. And so if we're looking for, you know, White House images, then we'll look by geolocation. So it can be a DMO image, it can be a um, a user image. It's not really based on who submitted it. ZJ Tong asks, how do you get permission for using UGC? So um, for our website specifically, wh what we're doing is using a, a company called Tint uh, that brings it in within a tool system that's approved through the social media outlets. So if somebody's uh, putting their assets on, the t on, on um, those particular, like let's say Instagram, um, Tint is compliant with Instagram, so as long as we stay within that platform on our website, we're fine with using it. Now, it's a different question if you actually take UGC off of just, like, like let's say you just copy it off Instagram. That's actually a no-no. So when we do find something on Instagram or some other platform and we want to repurpose it outside of the Tint tool, um, there's actually a, a device inside Tint that allows us to contact that person either through a hashtag or through an email and, and gain permission. Next question is for, let's see, uh, Lisa Popin. Uh, she says, looks beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. I look forward to confirming our contact and process. Um, we did work with a gentleman to submit to the dam. Thank you for calling in the gentleman. Um, we currently don't have a page listed for the Napa Valley. So. so again, I want to repeat is we can work with you to create your own page. Uh, again, whoever you work with in Napa Valley, I believe it's Philip Joseph, give him a call. Uh, Terry Lawrenson says, are you going to explain partner opportunities today or direct us to the Miles representative? We've touched on what some of those opportunities are, but again, there's so many and they're so explicit. I'd like to uh, refer you either to our development team, your service team members, and or the Miles team, and we can give you much more details. And they're also on our site, thebrandusa.com, uh, under program opportunities. Oh, this is a nice comment from Jose Liado. He says, congratulations on a beautiful design that leverages personalization. Since the content will be displayed in a personalized way, will partners be asked for or have the ability to share tags related to their content to ensure it is displayed to the right users and in the right places? So we actually have a tagging structure that we use across the websites. We are certainly uh, interested in hearing your input about that structure. Uh, but we try to make things fit within the structure so the items properly surface. So there may be some negotiation in terms of the way that you're using our tag, your tags and the way that we use our tags, but we'll do the best we can to create a marriage. I think that's it. Great. Well, again, I want to thank you all. Feel, feel free, please, to reach out to our team. We're very excited about the site. We're really appreciative of all the hard work you all have done in providing the content that has helped us refresh the site. And we look forward to a lot of great success driving more traffic to your pages, our pages, and driving business and more bookings to the U.S. And if you have any general questions about the website, again, you can email socialmedia at thebrandusa.com and we'll be happy to direct you to either one of us on the digital team or your partner representative based on the question. So if that's easier for you to do it that way, social media at thebrandusa.com. Please take a look at the websites today. Visit the USA.com. Thank, Thank you. you.